I could just to listen to that a while. <laughs> That's very fine. I'm sorry that I was late tonight. The manager called me up and told me to come a little early tonight, and I, I forgot about it. And I was just going ahead praying, and I happened to look up, and I think, well, here it's... I looked at my watch, and I said, well, my, it's water after. i got to hurry. And here they were standing out there, wouldn't meet me when I come in. <laughs> so they said they going to dock me, so I guess that's... <laughs> All right, well, we're happy to be here tonight. Very happy and sorry that the weather keeps on like this, but we understand that tomorrow or next day it's going to break, according to the weatherman. I hope that he's right. Whatever the Holy Spirit will meet with is just the same. He he never fails us, and he'll always be here just the same. I love him tonight, and I know you do too, don't you? Sir, I'm very happy that everybody's in love with Jesus. And... He's in love with every one of us. <laughs> That's the good part, isn't it? <laughs> that he loved us before we loved him. <laughs> when we were real ugly, behaving, and contrary to God, yet he loved us. I just, that sounds bad, doesn't it? To think, of, Brother Ryan, I don't know whether I could suffer that very long or not. Somebody being so ugly and different with me, and still, I love him. Here one time, hasn't been too long ago, I was having a meeting and up in... Ohio, and oh, the big arena was packed, and we were just, I had to stay out in the country at a tourist court, and we'd been eating at a little Dunkard restaurant, oh, it was the nicest people, and the people were so kind, and we appreciated them so much, and then Sunday, of course, they closed up, we had to go across the street, across the road to a little place, but it was a very whirly little place, had one of them little noisy jute boxes that everybody played, brother, the guy that will take them out of the nation, I'll vote for him, (laughs) I sure will. And all that there, crazy music going on. And so as soon as I walked in over there, the first thing I noticed was a policeman standing with his arm around a young lady playing a slot machine. And that's illegal in Ohio to play a slot machine. But the law. Now, then the next thing I noticed was look back there and a young lady very indecently dressed and sitting on the side of a table about half drunk with some boys with her. And look sitting down to my right and there was an elderly lady about... Or 65, I guess, and she had a little, a very half-nude clothes on, you know, and, and her lips was painted with blue-looking paint, and her toenails the same color. Mmm, I thought, that's terrible. And I begin to think, is my little Sarah and Rebecca going to have to be raised up and such as that? What will be the outcome? I thought, oh, God, how can you stand to look at it? Looks like we just turn on and blow the world up. And then while I was standing there looking at that, I was criticizing that woman. I was criticizing the officer in my heart. But I had never taken a seat yet to, at the table. And then it just seemed like something said to me, step over here to one side, I want to talk to you. <laughs> that was my boss. <laughs> and when I stood over there and I began to think like this, and it just seemed to come to me that before me, not a vision, just a mental vision, I'd call it. It seemed like I could see the world, and around the world was a rainbow. And that rainbow represented the blood of Jesus Christ. And if that blood would ever leave there, God couldn't look at the world a second. He'd destroy it. That blood of Christ is the only thing that keeps the, the wrath of God off us tonight. Did you know that? If it wasn't for that, there'd be no more world in five minutes from now. God cannot look in the face of sin. And the reason he can't see the world is because the blood of Jesus Christ is a holding it off to sin. If God could look in and see such a scene as that, it would be finished. He, he's too holy. He couldn't stand it. Then, but the blood of Jesus. And then, here's what come to me. I thought to see the blood of Jesus, how it acted as a bumper. It's like to the car. The car, instead of, when he strikes, it'll hit the bumper, and it, the bumper will protect the car. And I thought, that's what the blood of Jesus is. It's a bumper for our sins. That before it goes before God, it's, he catches it. It's a bumper. And I thought, oh my. Here I was criticizing that woman. I may not have did that. I may not have acted like that policeman was acting. But yet, in the sight of God, I was a sinner just as bad as they was. Just as bad as the woman sitting there. Uh, Sin is sin, that's all. No matter what your your immorals are, you're a sinner, you're just a sinner. And so I thought, yes, and God would have destroyed me if it hadn't been for the blood of Jesus Christ to keep my sins from his presence. And then something come to me and said, yes, I forgive you, but you want to condemn her. Oh, God, that's right. That's right. 
I see my sins then, and one day I crawled up to him, and I seen an old book laying there. It had William Branham at the top, and all kinds of sins wrote under it. And I said, Lord, I, I'm so sorry that I've caused you all this bleeding and his face sweating and blood running down. And I said, I was the one who did that. Will you forgive me? And he took his hand and dipped it in his side and wrote on that old book, Pardon. Throwed it back behind him in the sea of forgiveness. Never to remember it against me no more. That's right. Now, he forgave me, and I wanted to condemn her. That changed my attitude. I walked down there to the woman. I said, how'd he do? There's two men with her, and they were very, very bad acting. And so they just stepped out, and I walked down. I said, would you pardon me? And she's drinking. And she said, yes, sir. I said, I'd like to talk to you. I said, I'm a minister. She said, yes. And I said, I am. I said, wonder if I could ask you a question. Why does this be like this? Are you a mother? She said, yes, sir. I said, why would you be drinking and things? May I ask if it's not into uh, getting personal with you? Well, if you'd have heard the woman's story, it was a heartbroken story. And she said, I was once a Christian. I said, if I'm not mistaken, aren't you Reverend Branham is down there? I said, I am. And I told her what I'd just seen. I said, I stood here and condemned you and thought God ought to come in and tear the place up with such as this going on. But I've changed my mind. God forgave me, and I want him to forgive you. And right there at that seat, I led her to Jesus Christ. Amen. It's your, it's your attitude towards things. Don't condemn others. If they do wrong, be good to them anyhow. Just look over those things because God's had to look over a whole lot for you and I. That's right. God help us to have that attitude always in our hearts. You pray for me that I'll never look upon people like that no more, no matter what they're doing, that I always look upon them, that they're creatures of God, that God sent His Son to take their place. And me as a minister, I'm grateful that He forgive me, and I want Him to forgive them also. That's the way we should do it. In Isaiah, the 30, 53rd chapter, we read this. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form nor commonness. When we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of man, a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. And we hid as it was our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him, stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and the sheep before his shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison, from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, and for the transgressions of my people was he stricken. And he was made his grave with the wicked, and in the rich in his death. Because he has done no violence, neither was there deceit found in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, and he shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. The prophet Isaiah getting a vision of what Jesus was, who he was, and what he would do, and what a sin offering he was made. It's awful warm tonight, so I believe instead of preaching as a said hood, my preaching, I'm not very much of a preacher, I'm just one of these old kind of sarsaparas, we call it down in Indiana, you know, so you're... Two nice of people had to push that off on. So I'll just testify and tell you something maybe that the Lord has did along our, our journey. Now, I want to think of some of my early days when I first started out in the great campaigns. 
The meetings had a lot of tinsel then. Of course, everybody was running here and there. But now, of course, it's different than what it was then. The pastor Baxter, my brother, and I were talking the other day, thinking, said, look at the great things, what's happened, and then look how it settles down. God gives a, a meeting, and then he finishes up his things. We think of Jesus Christ when he was here on earth. His first years of his ministry, all oh, the tinsel was hanging everywhere. The second year of his ministry, they begin to accuse him and call him Beelzebub and so forth. The third year, they killed him. <clears throat> See, that's the way it goes always. The first years of the Pentecostal church, it was wonderful. Right away, there was a persecution coming. The second year, scattered them everywhere. The third and fourth year, they began to find people, just a little bitty groups. Like uh, there was five men besides four or five women. That was a church. See how it is? It's always that way. Just God sends out a great gospel net. And he throws it. The kingdom of heaven is likened to a man who went to the sea and threw in a net. And when he drew the net in, he had everything. It, it wallowed in the sea. He had it in the net. He had fish. He had turtles. He had water spiders. He had serpents. He had everything. Now, it's not our business as preachers to say this is fish and this is that. We just pull the gospel net. And then it isn't long when you see a revival go on. Many people get saved and praise the Lord. But see, some of those are fish. And some of them are, would say, turtles. It isn't very long to say, well, I didn't believe there's anything to it after all. And here he goes running right on back into the puddle again. And the old water spider, no plop, plop, plop. I told you that wasn't right after all. The way he goes back to the water and the serpent will start hissing saying, I don't like the way they do this thing. Right on back to the water it goes. But there's some fish in there too. God knows there are fish by nature. He's a spider by nature. He's a serpent by nature. And God is the one who does the election and the calling. And it's just our business to preach the gospel. Is that right? God does the calling. One plants another in waters and God takes the increase. I remember it was a very hard thing at first when it first started out. Preaching divine healing. Oh, my. I remember what the bishop of the church told me. Why? He said, Billy, you had a nightmare. You never seen no angel. I said, I don't appreciate that, Brother Davis. I said, no, sir. It, to me, it's sacred. And it means uh, lots to me. He said, you mean you with your grammar school education is going to pray for kings and monarchs? I said, that's what he said. It'll be that way. I said, go on, Billy. And so I said, no, I'll just give you my fellowship card while I'm standing here because I'm not going to be using it anymore I'm afraid so he said oh I wouldn't think that way but I said well it, we just might as well I said if God is sending me there's going to be somebody out there who's going to receive it that's all God will never work anything here but what he's got something working there and you believe that absolutely I was today I was thinking and a man in his heart as he thinks in his heart so is he and then I was thinking of how that the first beginning of the meetings, after it got started out, the, some of the events that happened, how people would have dreams and come to the meeting, how a great revival was in its making and stirring, and now it's just whirled out and went all around the world and everywhere. And tonight, even many of the full gospel churches are condemning divine healing and saying there's no such a thing, it's witchcraft and everything. People who ought to be standing up for the, for the powers of God. But you know what God does? He just sets that organization on the shelf and moves on just the same. It doesn't stop him a bit. It's always. All organizations will finally wind up over there in Babylon, just like the Bible says they will. And God out of the whole bunch, the very word church means called out. Come out from among them, my people, that you be not partakers of their sins. That's exactly right. Now, I remember one time at Jonesboro, Arkansas, as one of the... the thrilling things that just come into my mind now. It happened on a night. Uh, I was having the services at the, the auditorium, and there's so many people had gathered out there to the paper said we had 28,000. Well, if the paper said so, they were all there, <laughs> every one of them. And so they was for 40 miles near Jonesboro. You couldn't even get a farmhouse. They had tent cities and everything to to take care of the people for the accommodation. When they begin to see the marvel of God's great power to reveal things, it was all news. It just went right out. But now they've seen it so much, so, well, Lord, if that's all you got, well, I'll wait for something else. Oh, my. That's people, isn't it? <laughs> that's people. But I remember I hadn't seen my wife for about 
two months or three. And I had a little girl, my first little girl, which is, they'll be on the road up here tomorrow. Um, she's uh, seven years old now. She's just a little bitty fellow when I left home. And when I come back, she didn't even know me. I'd lost most of my hair and I fell off a lot of weight, about 20 pounds and stooped shoulders. And her mother would tell her, say, that's daddy. And my picture on the, on the dresser said, that's daddy. And when I come in one cold day and walked into the place and we lived in little two rooms and my wife was in there and we was talking and she's, I said, where's the baby? She said, sleep in the next room. So I went into the little old crib and I never will forget. I woke her up and those big blue eyes looked at me, you know, and she was scared of me. That hurt me. And my mother picked her up and handed her over to me. She said, that's daddy. She got back. That wasn't her daddy. She looked over to the picture. Oh, didn't look like her daddy. So, well, look, friends. I was preaching the gospel. I was doing the best I don't know how, as I'm doing tonight. Some glorious day, it'll be different over on the other side when we all get home. And I broke down. I'd stay in day and night in the platform. Stayed one time for... About four days and nights or more without even leaving the platform, praying for the sick. And there were more people at the end of the meeting, many times more than it was when we started. And just no end to it, praying for the sick. And great things were taking place. I remember one night there, there's a lady came up. She had her handkerchief like this. I thought she was crying. It was about 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. And just as soon as I took a hold of her hand and was talking to her, and I thought she was weeping. I said, old lady, you, you got cancer, haven't you, on the nose? And she pulled it, the handkerchief back, and her whole nose was eaten off. And so, um, and I said, you believe that Jesus will heal you? And she said, I have just left Memphis. And she said, uh, the doctors told me over there the other day, there's no hope for me now. I done got such a straight uh, start, rather, to the radium or nothing would stop it. And oh, I thought, isn't that, sh- that sure is too bad. And just a little bit after that, why? Well, I prayed for her, and about three or four months from then, I was over at um, Texarkana, and was in a little meeting there, and the first thing you know, I seen somebody waving at me back there, waving at me, and I didn't know who it was. This young fellow jumped up, he was an exterminator at um, there, and he raised up, he said, Brother Branham, I just can't hold it any longer. And I said, what's the matter, son? And he said, this is my mother, do you recognize her? I said, no, I don't. She said, I was a woman who didn't have any nose about three months ago. She had another nose. God had healed her. They grow back. And I have her name and address, her testimony. And the trouble, the thing was, she was doctor and she went back to her doctor. And he, she said, he said, oh my. She said, what do it look like now? I said, well, say. said, uh, what's happened? She said, I changed doctors. I said, well, who did you go to? He, she said, I went to Dr. Jesus. He said, Dr. Jesus. So let's see. Where does he practice that? I said, I don't believe. <laughs> my, isn't that something? <laughs> oh, my. But many things happened along. I remember another night there that something taking place. I was at, um, at Little Rock. And there was a, you know, I, Reverend Mr. Brown, if you'd like for this testimony, just write Reverend G.H. Brown, 505 Victor Street, V-I-C-T-O-R, Victor Street, and Little Rock, Arkansas. We'd been praying, and the, all the newspapers that would give me the office write-up, saying that there was, that I'd blocked, uh, had the ambulances out there, said a, a self-styled, natly dressed Baptist preacher. Oh, you never heard such in your life. But tell him, so it said it. And they had the streetcars blocked off in the streets from the ambulances. And I'd been praying for about two or three hours. And Reverend Brown come to me, which is one of the sponsors on the meeting. He said, Brother Branham, when you get finished down at the bottom of the auditorium, he said, there's a case like you never seen before. I'd been praying for the sick then about three or four months. Seen many things that much time. And he said, when you get a chance to take a little breath, I was going to pray for him all night anyhow. He said, come down, I want to show you something like you've never seen before. I said, all right. So after a while, I went down to the steps. And now, friends, when I got down, I'm just telling these things for God's glory, you see, for the glory of Jesus Christ, that you might know some of the things that's happened. Oh, millions of things. Oh, I wouldn't say millions, but many thousands of things anyhow has happened. And I went out the bottom of the steps, and there laid a lady laying on the floor. She was dressed with black shorts, and she had both hands sticking up like this, and her feet sticking right up, laying on her back. Just laying there like that. I said, there's a typical old Arkansas brother standing there. And he, I said, is that your wife? He said, it is, Brother Branham. And I said, why is her, her, her legs bleeding like they are? I said, well, said, she's from the insane institution. 
said um, she was going to the time of menopause and she had a baby born and it threw her into a premature menopause and the doctor gave her some shots and it went to her head and so she went wild and he'd been in the insane institution two years and he'd heard about from over Mississippi a, a soldier's mother that had been healed and taken out of the institution so he said I brought her said Brother Branham I've got four little children at home and he said and I've I've, we've sold her farm and everything, he said, to, to try to get her well. And she's taken treatments and said, then uh, today, he said, uh, I sold my mules. He said, I had to bring her down here and said, they let me bring her out just over the night and said, they couldn't get her in an ambulance. And I've taken some brothers up there and five of us got her out of the place and put her in a car. And so that's where she kicked all the glasses out of the car coming down where five men couldn't hold her. And when they got her in the building there, Brother Brown said she'd just taken the place. They'd just, she'd just throw a man every way. So when they let her down, oh, she'd lay on her back and just throw her hands and feet up like that. Her eyes set real glassy, and that's the way she stayed. Well, I said, that's too bad. I said, I'll walk out and take a hold of her hand. He said, oh, Brother Brandon, don't you do that. I said, she'd kill you. Oh, I said, I don't think so. And, I, and it just a, a, a boy like on the way, so not having too much deleting with demonology. So he said, Brother Branham, I warn you, don't do that. And I said, oh, I don't think she'd hurt me, brother. And I walked down a little step like that, walked out on the floor. She was laying there with her hands up. I said, how do you do, sister? Tuck a hold of her hand. And just as I tuck a hold of her hand, I, she just gripped down like that. And if she gave a pull like that, and she pulled me practically off of my feet. And she would have threw me across the room. And I watched she would have weighed about a hundred and... Oh, I guess 70 or 80 pounds and that demon power. Did you ever see a person possessed with demon power? They got four times their strength. Well, if the devil can give you four times strength when possessed with him, what about possessed with the Holy Ghost? How much power could God give you? See? And then, that's the reason you're afraid, you people that's crippled. Don't be afraid. Stay away them crutches and get up and start off. God's with you. If he's anointed you, he'll give it to you. That's right. Be anointed with the Holy Spirit. And then, when this woman, she jerked me like that, and I almost come off of my feet, and I threw my ha- foot like that, and it caught her right across the breast like this. I caught, and it pulled my hand out of hers. Well, I, I ran back towards the, the steps again. He said, I told you, Brother Branham. And she started making a real funny noise, going, <laughs> and she started crawling like a snake on her back. Just a real, you can hear it dragging, you know, just drag, drag like that across the floor, concrete like that. And she got against the wall, put her great big strong limbs against the wall, and kicked like that. And when she did, she hit a, a seat, and her head hit like that. And it, there's a seat sitting there where the people have been sitting in before they brought her there. And it broke the seat, the bench it was, and the hair and blood come out of her head. She just started making a real funny noise, picked up that thing in her hand like that, and threw it at her husband, and just knocked the plaster off the wall where it hit right by the side of where he was at. Said, you see, Brother Branham? Said, so now all hopes is gone. Said, what can I do? And he, a poor old fellow started crying, put his arms up around me like that old patched overalls on. I felt so sorry for the boy. And I said, well, brother, look, the only thing I know to tell you that this angel that met me told me that if I be sincere and get the people to believe, when I prayed that he'd heal the sick. I said, do you believe that? The simple faith to believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, cast out devils. And he, he has gone up into the Father now. And he's sure in the form of the Holy Spirit. I said, I believe he's the same Jesus today that he was then. I said, I don't have to tell you what's wrong. You know what's wrong. He said, that's right. I said, do you believe if I'll ask God, God will do it? He said, I do. And about that time, she turned around on her back. She said, William Branham, you haven't got nothing to do with me. I brought her here. Come crawling up towards me. While her husband turned and said, well, what's this? Said, that woman don't even know her own name. Said, she hasn't spoke a word in two years. I said, that wasn't her. That was that devil. Mm-hmm. That's that devil. He knows that he's going to have to leave the woman if you'll only believe on the Lord Jesus Christ right now. And he kept calling like that. You have nothing to do with me. I brought her here. So I said, now you agree with me. He said, all right. I said, Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, make that devil leave the woman. So she didn't never talk no more. She just, he said, what shall I do? I said, take her on back. That the service is over. Do you believe it's got to happen? He said, all right. So 
about three months after that, I was up here at uh, Jonesboro, and I happened to see somebody back there waving. Now, I didn't know who it was sitting right out like that, and just waving at me, and it was a, it was the woman sitting there. She said, don't you recognize me, Brother Branham? I said, no, I don't. She had her four little children all sitting around. She said, well, the last time you see me, they told me that I was bleeding all over and I was out of my head. And the, he had tucked the woman back, had no trouble taking her back. She sat up. And the second day when she's in the institution, I said, let them dismiss her. So the second day, they come to her and she was setting up. The third day, they give her a discharge from the place sent her home in her right mind. See, that's right. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. In that night, I had just about a time for about another little short testimony. My wife had never seen one of the meetings, and I sent for her to come down. I was so lonesome. And so she came down, and Brother Reed, this was at Jonesboro, and Richard, T. Richard Reed could give you the testimony of this. The Blessed Old Bible, Our Tabernacle, he's a pastor of it, down in Jonesboro, Arkansas, if you'd like to get this testimony. And then I remember that night when we started the meeting for three city blocks standing in the street. You couldn't, the cops was there, just letting them, as they would pile up, I can't block off the sides and keep up. And my wife said, did all these people come to hear you preach, honey? I said, no, honey, they come to see Jesus. And the little fellow stood there, she's very backward, holding my hand, crying. And she sang this song, oh, they come from the east and west. They come from the land afar, you've heard it, to feast with the king, to dine as his guest. How happy these pilgrims are. And she stand there singing that for me. And then the ushers come forth and said, Brother Branham, we've been waiting. And so down, I never know what become of her. And they got me into the building. And just as I got in there, I happened to look down. All the ambulance stretchers and everything laying. There's two nurses by a little girl here. She had TB. And I, I could just feel that something was going to take place right there. And while I was watching this, there's a man standing over on this side with a blue uniform, kept waving his hat. I said, are you trying to talk to me, sir? He said, yes, sir. He said, I, I've got a case out here that's, and, that she's dying, and I think she's already dead. He said, I can't find a doctor anywhere. And said, we had a doctor there, just a house doctor. and said, I think she's already dead. And said, would you come to her? I said, brother, there's probably 2,000 people banked in there. I said, I don't believe I could do it. And, and four or five ushers stepped down and said, well, we'll help you get up there. We started out, got out to the ambulance for all oh, this about eight or ten ambulances sitting in the row. And this is a big ambulance. The, the man told me, he said, there's been a man had been healed that morning, blind, been blind for ten years. And he was prayed for, told him he's going to receive his sight. And on the road home that morning, his eyes come open. He's, he's riding an old Model T Ford up them rough roads in Arkansas. And he began to scream. They stopped the car and out and around and around the car he went screaming. He run into the city, Kenneth, or some little place down in Missouri, that little boot heel type of Missouri there. And he run, went into the church, the Catholic church, and began to testify, and they throw him out. <laughs> And he had his hat hanging on his black cane, or his white cane, rather, his black hat, going down the street screaming at the top of his voice. He used to be a shoe cobbler there. And he was going down the street screaming and praising God. He went into Methodist Church. <laughs> they threw him out of there. <laughs> they didn't know. He was taking the city, huh? I tell you, he was. And they had a, everybody in the hospital want to come down and be prayed for. So the ambulance said, I've got to go back. And said, I've, I've got to. So we got in there, and when he's. I said, well, now you just open the door. We went in, and a very typical old dad there, his old hat so with twine, wrapping string and all around. Those Arkansas people are poor as they can be, but brother, under them old blue shirts beats some real good, true Holy Ghost filled hearts. Yes, sir. I'd rather have one of them with me anytime and maybe a slicker with his collar turned around in the back, and I couldn't trust him out of my sight. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Just, I tell you, this old time religion, brother, straightens you up. <laughs> That's right. It'll make a, a, a silk dress and a calico put their arms around one another called sister. Is that right? It'll make a tuxedo suit and a pair of overhauls call each other brother. <laughs> That's what it'll do, brother. It'll clean you up. It'll make no difference in you. It tears down that self and starch and pride that we've got. And so then... I, I remember getting in there, and he had the sh soles of his shoes was out. He was kneeling down, hollering, oh, God, give her back to me. God, a poor old fellow. I happened to think of my own old dad when I see him gripping that hat like that. I said, what's the matter, Dad? He said, who are you? And I said, I'm Brother Branham. He said, oh, Brother Branham. He said, Mother's such a sweet woman. And said, I've lost her, I'm sure. And I said, well, what's the matter? So I took a hold of her hand. Her eyes were set now, but I do not think she was dead. See? And her false teeth had been taken out and laying down like muddy looking water had come down from her eyes. And her eyes were set right back. Real old woman. Not real old, but 
uh, past the middle age, I'd say 68, 70, somewhere along there. So she was um, playing and like that. And I said, uh, and I felt of her, her forehead was sticky with perspiration. And he said, she just quit breathing a while ago, Brother Branham. Said, oh, she's a good woman. Said, she's hard over them old clods and helped to make me a living. Said, we raised a bunch of children. And said, she took this cancer. And said, the doctor has worked faithfully. He's done all he could do. It was in the female glands. And said, there's nothing more he could do. And said, we sold her quilts to get the ambulance to bring us down here. The quilts that she had made. And I thought, oh, God. I said, well, let's pray, brother. And I took a hold of her hand. And I said, Heavenly Father, I was going to pray for consolation. I'll confess it. I thought the woman was gone. And so I, and as I was praying, I felt something grip my hand. The devil said to me, he said, that's just the flesh, you know. Just, she's dead. And that's just the nerves twitching. I went ahead praying a little bit longer. And I felt it twitch again. I looked. I kept praying, but I was looking over at her. And the old man was down on the floor crying, God, give me back, Mother. And I was holding her hands like that. And then I happened to look again. And I seen the, the skin on her forehead wrinkling. <laughs> and she looked up at me. She said, what's your name? <laughs> and I said, I'm Brother Brandon. She said, well, we come down for you to pray for me. And I said, yes, ma'am. She said, I feel so good. I said, would you set up? And about that time, he looked, the old man looked at me all over, Mother, mother, mother. And the tears running down his poor old whiskered cheeks. And he, and he grabbed her like that. And they began to hug and kiss one another. And oh, three or four months later, she was in the meeting down there testifying. Just shelling the woods with that testimony. So I started to go out. And the usher said, why, Brother Branham, you couldn't get out. Said, there's thousands of people that's banked in here. And so I said, well, if you just act like you're taking off your coat now, they won't notice me. And I'll slip out this other side and you send them ushers around. Nobody knows me back there in that parking lot. Just standing full of people and it's raining, just pouring right on down. They're standing out there anyhow, holding papers over their children and things like that. Been laying on the street for five or six days at a time. Like that, laying under cotton trucks, anything they get. They love the Lord. They come to church, brother. They love him and they believe him. And then I was... Went around the back of the place like that. He started, to, that looked like a hypocrite to do that, but I just couldn't get in to where there was all that and the poor things just almost stampeded you. So he started taking off his coat like this and I slipped out the door and went up and down through that ambulance row, come around in the back and started in up there. There's a big floodlights is back in behind the place and they had a bunch of chartered buses setting like that. And I was going along through there, pushing along, you know, like this and nobody knew me, nobody had seen me yet because they couldn't get near the building. They'd stayed right in that building. What was in there kept their places. And so... They um, send someone out to get some sandwiches or somebody hold their place while they had to go out and come back, you know. They was holding their place. Then I was thinking, as I went along there, somebody kept saying, quit pushing, quit pushing. I said, excuse me. Just kept on, you know, pushing along. I pushed up side of a great big tall fellow standing there whittling with his knife. And I pushed right under him like that. He said, quit pushing. Uh, I did because I was afraid he was going to push. <laughs> and so I, I said, excuse me, sir. And I... I stood with my hands down like this. He looked down at me kind of sarcastic like, you know, and kept on winning. I said, I'm sorry. He never said a word, just kept on winning. I said, yes, sir. I watched and I thought, well, I started pushing again in a few minutes when he gets thinking about something else. So I looked around. So after a while, I heard somebody hollering, Daddy, Daddy. And I wonder where that was. It sounded like a southern voice of the colored people. Usually, the, all the southerners talk a whole lot alike. And I happened to look, and coming out in the midst of the people more than there is sitting here, standing in that back parking lot, was a young colored girl. Now down there they have a law of segregation, Jim Crow law, and the white and colored cannot come together. And so I don't think that's right, but and so that's, that's wrong. I just don't say that for any respects of our colored friends here tonight, but I don't care if there's nobody here, that's wrong. That's right. And I'm a Southerner, but I, that's still wrong. I'm an Abraham Lincoln man. I, I believe that, that God made us all the same. That's right. So then, and I, I seen the girl coming, and, she, and I seen her. Her eyes was as white with cataracts as my, my shirt. And she was, nobody would help her. She's just pushing through the crowd. I learned, Daddy, Daddy, like that. And I thought, poor old thing. And I thought, I believe I'll get over it. To see what she wants. Nobody knows me. And I was watching for those ushers to come around the corner. They were trying to get through the crowd. So I pushed up close to where she was. And when she started this way, I'd get over this way. So I'd get right in front of her. And so that looked like awful to do that. So she bumped right into me. And she said, pardon me. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, pardon me, sir, when she heard my voice of being a man. And I said, what's the matter? She said, sir, I've lost my daddy. I can't find him. He said, I was blind. And I can't find my daddy. 
And I said, well, um, where are you from? She said, I'm from Memphis. And I looked over and I seen a chartered bus sitting there from Memphis. I thought, well, I can get her back there before them ushers. If I can't, I'll let one of them get her over there. And she said, I come over here from Memphis and said, I lost my daddy. I said, well, I don't see any more colored people in, the, in the, this crowd of people. She said, oh, will you help me to get to the bus? And I said, what did you come over here for? She said, I come over to see the Gila. <laughs> I said, the what? She said, the Gila. And I said, do you believe that? She said, I thought I'd test her faith right good, you know. I said, do you believe that? She said, yes, sir, I believe it. And I said, oh, that made me feel little, you know. So I said, uh, well, um, do you believe in the days of all these great fine doctors and hospitals that God would send an angel down to earth and would heal people? She said, yes, sir, I believe it. I said, how'd you ever hear about it? She said, I was hearing this morning on the radio, a man up here in Kent, or Missouri that had uh, been blind 10 years, and he got his sight. That was him testifying on the radio, see? And she said, I was come over, we formed a big committee, and we come over by the bus. And she said, they tell me this is the healer's last night here, and said, I can't even get near the building. And said, I've lost my father, I was blind, I, I just don't know what to do. I thought, poor her. She wasn't, she's in her teens, 17, 18 years old. And I said, what's wrong? She said, well, I got cataracts. And she said, the doctor told me when they were ripe, he would take them off. But said, now since they got ripe, said, he says he can't take them off because they're wrapped around the optical nerve of my eyes. If he'd take it out, he'd have to take the optical nerve with it. And I said, and you believe that that healer would heal you? She said, yes, sir, I believe it. And I said, well, look at the doctor. She said, they can't help me. And I thought of that song of old blind Fanny Crosby. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others I are calling, do not pass me by. And I thought of it. She, she said, I said, oh, you don't believe that kind of stuff, do you? Yeah, I question her again. She said, sir. She said, I perceive that you are a white man. I believe that you're a white man. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, if you'll just help me in to where that man's at that's praying for the sick, I'll be able to find my daddy after that. <laughs> that was too much for me. I, I thought I'd been a hypocrite long enough. I said, look, lady, now keep hold your feet. I said, do you believe that guy's the healer? She said, I believe Jesus is the healer. I said, that's right. I said, but I'm Brother Branham. She said, is you the healer? And I said, no, no. And she grabbed me right by the lapels like I had the coat. She said, I, is you the healer? And I said, no, you said Jesus was the healer. She said, yes, sir. But, 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 but you is the, 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 the Parson Branham. And I said, yes, ma'am. And she said, oh, have mercy on me, Parson Branham. She said, Lord, how did this ever happen? <laughs> Out there, how did this ever be? God knows how to do it. <laughs> And I said, well, if you'll turn loose my coat now. I said, and I couldn't pull it. No, sir, she wasn't going to turn me loose. <laughs> no, sir. She's holding me right tight. She said, no, sir. She said, I, I might lose you here. And I said, no, I'll pray for you. See, and I said, let me have your hand just a minute. I want to hold your hand while I pray for you. And I said, you bow your head now. And she did. And I prayed something like this. I said, oh, dear God. Some 1,900 years ago, an old rugged cross come dragging down through Jerusalem. Dragging out the bloody footprints of the barrier on the road up to Calvary the weight was so heavy the big old cross on his little weak shoulders it rubbed until he fell under the load then along comes Simon the serene colored man picked it up and helped him bear the cross I said Lord Jesus here's one of his children tonight staggering here in total blackness and darkness she can't see her hand before her. And Lord you know what it meant for that man to take that load off of your shoulder that day and to help you to bear that cross I said God you bore her sickness at the same time you was bearing that cross up down her I said I ask thee now and just about that time something come over me I know that it happened <laughs> I know that it was gone I waited just a minute and I wanted as brother Baxter gives you the instruction in the afternoon here when a demon see a, 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 a growth is a demon and it's living building cells and just the life leaves it but yet it'll shrink then after a while it'll swell and get bigger than it ever was but the life's gone out of it it'll leave you see and if you don't know those things you'll sure can't you don't understand divine healing well there's no need to try it because or it's just a try anyhow see if you're trying it like that but if you know what's going to happen then your faith is centered and you've got to get sick before you get well because that growth's in you and your 
bloodstream has to take think of a piece of growth that big on the inside of you and it, well in plain rotten a lump of meat like that lady and sure you have fevers and sickness and everything some people say I lost my healing well that's the best sign in the world you got it see and so I was waiting for that shrinkage to come on that cataract so she could see she had her head down I said don't raise your head now and don't make any noise I said if you do then I was watching where my ushers hadn't got there yet so I'm I said, now, as you raise your head, keep your lids over your eyes till you get just about even what you think with my face, and I'll tell you when to open your eyes. She said, all right. And I'd give her time, then she raised her head. I said, you're just about even now. Now, do you believe? She said, yaza. She said, something cool went all through me. I said, now, you, you can see just a moment. And she said, oh, Lord, the tears running down her dark cheeks like that. And I said, now, open your eyes. You've received your sight in the name of Jesus Christ. She opened her eyes. She said, Lights. She said, is that lights? I said, what's this? See, it wasn't too thin yet. She, she couldn't tell daylight from dark. But it shrank, you see, when the, uh, the light went out of the cataract. She said, what, is, is them spots? Wall? Is that people going? I said, that's right. She said, oh, Lord, I who was once blind now sees. And, and she gave a big scream and jumped out like that. And about that time, I, the ushers was coming around over to the corner. I started to go back this way to meet him. And there was an old brother standing there. His one leg was setting out like this. He had a big club in his hand. had been watching that drama. And he was standing there like that. He said, Brother Branham, I know who you are. He said, I've been standing in this rain eight days. He said, I got a bunch of little children at home. He said, will you ask God to heal me? I looked at his leg. I said, how long has it been that way? He said, a wagon run over me when I was a boy. He said, I've got to work for my, make my children a living. He said, I've been standing here eight days in this rain. And I said, do you believe with all your heart? He said, with all my heart, I believe you're a good boy. And whatever you ask God, God will do it. I said, give me your crutch in the name of Jesus Christ. And as I stand here a living testimony before God, that crooked foot straightened out like that. He leaped out a jump like that up in the air he went screaming to the top of his voice yes sir and as I started up through there the women to that time and my mother's sitting here my wife will be tomorrow night she gets after me when I says it when I first started out I didn't even have a suit of clothes to wear now that's that's true my brother was a young boy he had had a wreck and he took a suit and it tore it had been torn up in a wreck in a car and he get start with and I had the old coat on and the trousers that was cut in several places and Meaty and I, it's my wife, we went out to the 10 cent store and got some of them patches, you know, you iron on with a hot iron, you know, and we, we'd iron some patches on it, and the coat was tore here on the pocket on the right hand side, tore down that way, and I got me a needle and thread, and I'm not very much of a seamstress, so, but I sewed it all up the best I could, and when ministers would come, you know, dressed up nice and everything, and I want to meet them, they'd say, Brother Brandon, this is so and so, I'm afraid to see that old, old tore pocket, and I'd hold my right arm over it like this, and I'd give him my left hand, I'd say, excuse the left hand is closer to my heart. <laughs> hold my left hand like that and that old ragged coat but as I was going down through there those poor with this world's goods yes cotton pickers so forth standing there but I got a glimpse in there and seen how Jesus Christ revealed the secrets of the heart see how he made they had faith and they were pressing and taking their little children and touching that old ragged coat to get healed. Let me tell you, there wasn't a one that was touching but what was getting healed. Now, it wasn't the old ragged coat, brother. It was their faith in Jesus Christ that was making them whole. That same Lord Jesus who was there that night, right here in Chicago, Illinois tonight, here in the Chicago Gospel Tabernacle. And just a touch of his garment, by faith, he'll make you well of whatever's wrong with you. Do you believe it? Our Heavenly Father... Oh, when I think about those glorious red-letter days, how that you were merciful and kind to the peoples, how they rallied by the thousands, you healed them till they'd take big cattle trucks and pile it full of wheelchairs and stretchers and cots. The people marched through the streets, hanging only believe. On the other side of Jordan, some of these days, when we sit down there, we'll meet many of them talking about the great things that you did here on earth. And my heart goes back tonight thinking of that night when that poor colored girl standing there received her sight. Years later, meeting her again there as a waitress working. God, how thankful I am in my heart that you are the resurrected Jesus and tonight this old world shook to pieces. Trouble on every hand. The whole world's nervous. Atomic and bombs and hydrogen bombs hanging over us. 
fearful enemies, Lord, who's right in their hands could destroy the whole nation overnight. The world of tottering. Oh, but God, look yonder, you died yonder at Calvary and redeemed us and got your blessings with us. And God, there couldn't be an atomic bomb. Fire out here now. In two minutes, we'd be in your presence. Standing yonder and made in his likeness. Sons and daughters of his to live with him throughout ceaseless ages. Nothing can harm us. And all things work together for good to them that love you. And Father, there's many of your sick children here tonight. I pray that you'll heal every one of them. And as they leave this building tonight, may they go rejoicing and happy and be made well of all their infirmities. And may there not be one feeble person left in our midst. Grant it, Lord. May something special happen tonight. Just something out there that the Holy Spirit will just fall over the people in such a way that they just can't keep from receiving it, Holy Lord. Grant it. And may they have a deep understanding. Open up their hearts and understanding, Lord, to know that these things are only to the glory of God and for the edifying of God's church, which Jesus Christ purchased with his own blood. Or we ask that in his name. Amen. Amen. What's your prayer for? All right. I didn't get to ask Billy tonight, but he and Brother Baxter both were standing out to pick me up when we come in. I was late. He said he'd give out prayer cards B. All right, that's not lying too many at a time. Listen, if one person in this building, the Bible has been preached, that's first and the initial right here. It's got to be, thus saith the Lord. And if God said so, that settles it. Remember, the word of God will defeat Satan anywhere, anytime. Just say, it is written. It is written. That settles it. Satan will have to flee. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Now, do you want me to tell you the first thing before we get the, while we're getting the prayer line lined up ready? You want me to tell you what I think is the matter with the Chicago here? What's the matter with the people? I'll tell you just what I think. I think you're lovely people. You've got, this is one of the nicest. When I get started praying for the sick, there seems to be a bank of faith sitting right there. So in so much that I can hardly pick out just when the angel of the Lord, I see it like a pillar, a fire, like hangs out over the person. Now watch and I'll see what it's going to do and it'll open up. Then I'll see who it is. Then I'll look down and see what's the matter with him. And then see who the person is. See, I can't do it myself. It's just who he says. It's not what I say. But you certainly have good, wonderful faith. I can feel it. And I believe it. But here's what you're afraid of. You're afraid to turn that face loose. That's it. You're afraid to act your faith. See, don't do that. Faith without works is dead. Amen. Just say, Amen. thank you, Jesus. That settles it. Amen. I'm going right on now, believing you. See? And then, now these signs, I know I've been accused of being an astronomer, a soothsayer, or a devil. Or, oh, my. There's nothing that hardly has been in the dictionary but what I've been called. All right. But that doesn't make any difference. They call the master of the house Beelzebub. So... I can expect that. But my Christian friends, I have never professed to be anything than a servant of God. I'm just a servant and only that, a sinner saved by grace. That's all. See? There's nothing in the world that I could do to help you. Only through a, now, by preaching, I could tell you what the Word says. Brother Baxter does that. And then at, with a divine gift, if God will permit, it will... Do the works that Jesus did. Now, Jesus didn't profess to heal the people. He said he only did what the Father showed him. But he did perceive their thoughts. Is that right? What if I told you Jesus Christ was a mind reader? How many would believe me? <laughs> oh, just a very few. But he was. Oh, oh. That met some opposition, didn't it? <laughs> All right. The Bible said Jesus... Many places perceive their thoughts. How many says that's true? Can anybody tell me the difference in perceiving thoughts or reading a mind? <laughs> if he knows what you're thinking about, what's he doing? <laughs> Not one of these psychic mind readers the devil's got out here to impersonate. I mean something for the glory of God. Yes, sir. The Urma Thundam was something that the lights flashed on a, on a breastplate of Aaron here over the 12 stones as the Urma Thundam was over it. 
Now the devil went and got a crystal ball to look into. See? The devil's got a pattern of everything God has got. The Bible says so. Yes, sir. So you look out there, but by their fruits you shall know them. The devil doesn't preach the gospel and get people to be healed and saved and accept Jesus Christ and baptize them. And, well, certainly not. If it is, he's in business with God. <laughs> Jesus said, how, well, how, if Satan cast out Satan, said then his kingdom's divided. Is that right? Yeah. No man can do a miracle in my name can speak light of me. When the disciples said, we found one casting out devils and he wouldn't follow us. He said, Jesus said, don't forbid him to do it. No man can say, again, I can do a miracle in my name can speak light of him. Now, I know he said, well, how about that day that he said, many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, I have not a cast. Yes, they said it. But Jesus said, if you did, I know nothing about it. That's these pretenders that you find. See? This pretending to be. Jesus says, Lord, have not I cast out devils? And have not I prophesied in your name? Preachers and so forth. He said, I didn't even know you. Didn't know nothing about it. They just pretended that they did. But this man was getting the job done that was casting out devils. He was really getting the, the work done. So Jesus yeah. recognized him. These yeah. just said, oh, I did this and I did that. But it was wrong. They just, they just said they did. Jesus didn't recognize it. But in the name of Jesus Christ, there is power. All right. Let's call from... Let's take the first 25. Who's got B card one? One B card. Just raise your hand wherever you are. All right. B, B one. All right. B two. B three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, on up to 25. Let's make that. I believe that's where we stood last night. And now as the meeting goes on, we're going to try more and more, if we possibly can, to get more in the... Now, that's B. Did he say B or B? B. Was it B? B, yeah. Excuse me. B, one, to B, uh, 25. What did he say? All right. You, you, all right. Thank you. All right. Now, as they're lining them up, now, look over, and then he'll let me know after a while. We'll start your prayer line. Brother Bose, you bring the lady, if you will. Now, how many believes with all your heart? Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Merciful Father, manifest your presence and glory tonight in this building that the children of man might go away from here saying, Truly, God has raised up his son from the dead and showing signs and wonders in our days to call a Gentile bride out for his name's sake. We ask this blessing through Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Sorry. I like that. How many believes there's power in music? There's some churches don't believe in having music in the church. Well, that's all right. That's, I won't argue with you that. But look, my dear friend, one time there was a, some preachers or some uh, kings that went out and made an alliance and went out into the desert and was going to do a great work out there and kill some people and they never sought God. So the first thing you know, they went out to Elijah the prophet to find out about it. And the prophet got all angry. He got angry. Elijah was a man subject to life passions as we are. Is that right? He had his ups and downs. He was an angelic being. He was a man. Big old rough looking fellow, hairy body and his hair sticking out like one of these fuzzy worms and his, his uh, beard out like that and a piece of leather wrapped around his body. If you'd be come up to your house begging, you'd run him away from the door perhaps. See? But beneath that little old brown skin beat a heart that was true to God. That's right. And he looked at him. He said, if it wasn't that I respected the presence of Jehoshaphat, the believer, I wouldn't even look at you. Is that right? Yeah. But he said, nevertheless, bring me a minstrel. And when the music began to play, the Spirit of God come up on the prophet. If it helped bring the Spirit on the prophet then, he'll do the same thing tonight. Don't you think so? That's right. All right. All right. Now, the Lord bless you now. And everyone be reverent. Set quiet. Have faith. Don't be disturbed. And just look this way, and when God does anything, you believe with all your heart that God is going to do the same thing for you. And if you do that, then God will bless you. Do you believe that? Amen. All right, now have faith.
Now, I suppose you being the uh, lady first in the line, my God is, do you believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has risen from the dead? And you do. And you believe that these things that we're... T- is this your first night in the meeting? You were here last night. You've seen the way the Holy Spirit revealed things. Yes. All right. Now, you just come in a while ago, and they give you a prayer card, and that be your number is called, and here you are up here on the platform. Is that right? Yes. Yes. That's, that's, yes. God bless you. I believe you have faith. And I... Now, if Jesus Christ is in the building, then he could... If he was standing here with the coat that I have on, standing here, he, he would know what was wrong with you. Yes, but now, as far as healing you, he'd tell you that he already did that when he died at Calvary. He'd test your faith. Is that right? Yes. He'd test your faith to see. If, do you believe that, he'd say? Do you believe that I died for you at yes. Calvary to, to heal you or to take away your worries or whatever's wrong with you, see? Yes. But you believe he'd, he'd tell you that? Yes. Yes, see? And then if you believe what he said, that would settle it, wouldn't it? Yes. Now, here's the last words. Do you read the Bible? Yes, I do. What was the, the last words that Jesus said when he left the world? Here's what he said as he was being taken up. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, speak with new tongues, take up serpents or drink deadly things that shall not harm them. And if they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Is that what he said? The first commission he gave his disciples was to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely as you receive, freely give. Matthew 10. The last commission he gave to his disciples was heal the sick also. And he's interested in healing, isn't he? Yes. Now, after he put it in his word, and you being a Christian, all things has to work for good then if you're a Christian. Yes, sir. Well, then, if, if you be sick, then it's got to be for some glory. Got to be for God's glory. It can't be for nothing else. See? And now, maybe it's for a testimony that you could testify to your people and tell them what great things Jesus has did. Yes, you, that's what you desire. Yes, God bless your heart. You, uh, you're very sick. You've been examined by an examination recently by a doctor, and uh, it was from your back. It's a, it's a, it's a cancer, and it's, it's on the spine and rectum. Is, is that right? Yes. Sir. My sister. Oh, yes. That's your boy sitting there. Yes. He's sick, too. Yes. He has hemorrhages of the nose. I've seen him wiping blood from his nose standing in the yard. <laughs> you both want to be healed? Yes, sir. You want to be healed, sonny boy? All right, let's bow our heads. Lord Jesus, your word said, they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Now, I rebuke the enemy, the devil, this demon that's killing this woman. Come out of her in the name of Jesus Christ. And may the Holy Spirit heal her little boy. In Jesus Christ's name I ask that. Amen. Now when you go down there, lay your hands on your boy and say, thank you, Lord. Let's say, praise be to God. Do you believe with all your heart? Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe you'll never have another hemorrhage. This is strange to you. And what makes you so upset? You're bothered with nervousness anyhow. That's your trouble. You believe he'll take it away from you? Yeah. At your age, and this time, there's probably only one remedy for you. That's Christ. That's a horrible thing. It's the worst feeling anyone could have. There's nothing like feeling that distressed, you see. But Jesus Christ can make you well. And remember, there's not a remedy in the doctor's book for it. Why? It's oppression. Demon oppression, like a dark shadow hangs. It's always causing you to be that way. But he will heal you if you can believe. Will you believe? Let's bow our heads. Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll heal the woman. 
let her go from here tonight and be made well. Grant it, everlasting God, in the name of thy son Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Amen. I go thanking God, being happy. You having faith? Amen. Now remember, friends, it's your faith. There's nothing that a man can do to heal you. A man has already healed you. You've just got to believe what he's done for you. Amen. See? You believe, lady? All right. Let's you and I talk just a moment then. If you're a believer, I, I believe that is truth. You have a wonderful atmosphere, but you're suffering. You have, um, you've had, your trouble is bad enough to you as just, you've been to a doctor. And I see him doing something right on a, oh, it's a heart trouble. You have heart trouble, don't you? And he had something around your arm. Is a blood pressure. That's right. And it's That's very right. seriously about 300. That's right. Is that right? That's right. I see him shake his head and walk away. Yes, he thinks right. you're going to have a stroke at any time. Yes, he does. That's what he said That's to you, see. Mm-hmm. Now, who is in the room there to hear him say that and come back and let me see it right here before me now? Jesus Christ. Is that right? That's right. Then he's interested in you, is he? I know he is. You believe you'll never have a stroke now, will you? No, I don't think so. God bless her now. May her faith be confirmed in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us say thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Believe with all your heart. You shall see the everybody in here ought to believe right now. Everybody in here ought to accept their healing just at this time. Believe with all your heart. How do you do, laddie? My, I like boys with haircuts like that. <laughs> you love the Lord? You do. Well, I think you're a fine boy. And, uh, and um, any boy that loves the Lord and loves his mother and father, and uh, I think that's a good boy. I think he can't go wrong doing that. Now, what if Jesus was here tonight and you were standing before him as you are, Brother Brandon? Now, Jesus would know just what was wrong with you. And he had come over and pick up children as he did, lay his hands on them and bless them. You'd get well, wouldn't you? That's right. You'd, you'd get well. But, of course, Jesus has went away and has sent back his gifts into the church. Is that right? You're mighty young to have that, son. <laughs> have a coughing, asthmatic like in the throat. Isn't that right? Asthmatic cough. Laying down, many times you have to raise it, just coughs you and hurts you so bad. That's a horrible thing. God bless you, little boy. You've got a very tender spirit. It's your mother sitting right there, isn't it? Do you believe too? That's your little sister sitting right there also. She's got sinus trouble. Isn't that right, honey? (laughs) Your mother has hay fever. Isn't that right? She has dropsy also. (laughs) God bless this little lad with his tears running down his cheeks. Let the mother stand and the little girl stand. While the Spirit of God is here tenderly, put your hands over on mother, sister, and mother to the girl. Our Heavenly Father, let thy mercies come now to these people, and may they go from here tonight and all of them get well. Grant it, Lord, I rebuke the devil that's binding them. May he come out of them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Look, little lad. Touch your wrist. Your, see, your asthmatic condition's gone. If all this dust on the floor and things like this, you'd be coughing your head off if you'd catch that. You're healed now. God bless you. Go in there. God be with you. You believe, sir, for just ask God, God will heal you. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the healing power of God strike your body and make you well. Amen. I go believing with all your heart. And thank you, Lord Jesus. Would you come, sir? What do you think? Excuse me. Excuse me. Do you believe with all your heart? I believe. Would you like to go home and eat your supper? Yes, all right, go ahead. <laughs> Jesus Christ will make you well. God bless you. God bless you.
Now you, you're going to serve it. All your life. God bless you. All right, come to me. Believe God will heal your eyes and make you well? You do? You Will you accept your healing now from Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Lord Jesus, I pray that you will heal her. And may she go from here tonight and receive her sight in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. Amen. God bless you now. Go believing with all your heart. Would you come? If I didn't say one word to you, you believe that you're in his presence now? While you're in this building, you're in his presence. Is that right? And you accept your healing. Then that female trouble has left you. All right, now you can go. And God's peace be with you. Let's say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do you believe, sir? Yes, sir. I'm a minister and I'm threatened with eye trouble that will seriously handicap my ministry. Uh, you're a minister and have eye trouble. Yes. Uh, and stomach trouble. Yes. So just go on off and eat your supper and praise, praise God Lord. and preach right. the gospel. Amen. 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 Let's say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And all oh, thanks be to the Lord Jesus. My soul cries out and magnifies Him who is the author of my life and your life. He is the author of everlasting life, the giver of every good gift. And sweet and lovely to those who love Him. No wonder He's so. Oh, I love to pour the adoration of my heart to him. It's joy unspeakable and full of glory to serve him. Never do I have a desire for anything else but to serve our Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, man. Yes, amen. That's right. You don't get over that foot trouble, brother. You do. Stop smoking cigarettes then and serve the Lord and you can have it. Will you do it? All right. God bless you. Go on, man. Get well. Hey, man. Amen. The blessings of God rest upon you all. Hallelujah. Something strikes my soul and sways me when I know His presence is around. Oh, what a feeling. My clothes fit me right. Everything when I know that He's near. You may call me a fanatic. That'll be all right. If it takes fanaticism to believe Jesus Christ, then I'm a fanatic. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I love my Lord. And I know His blessings is with us. And we are the sheep of His fold. Let us come into green pastures and eat to our heart's desire. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Would you come, lady? No, I uh, see what's wrong. Uh, you just have faith and just believe that with all your heart. How do you do, lady? Yes, that's the colored lady I was speaking to. That's it. Just have faith there, brother. Jesus Christ is present now to make you well. Do you believe? All your heart. Had quite a time getting here, didn't you? A lot of traffic on the road, isn't it? When he got behind that bus, that was terrible, wasn't it? You're awfully nervous, aren't you? You got a lot of temper that causes that nervousness. You're trying to get rid of it. You've got a lot of domestic trouble, too, that's bothering you. Isn't that true? Yes. Your boy back. Your daughter, stepdaughter, left with him. She's got a foul spirit. She went somewhere with him to a country where they'll see its great big trees, big pine trees. It's on a, it's near a lake or a seaside or something or another. Say, I'd say Washington or something like that, along in the state of Washington. Is that right? Tacoma. I thought it looked like along that Puget Sound. I. You believe it? She'll be healed. You believe that the boy will return. I believe it. I will. Yeah. Will you accept Jesus Christ's promise that all things work together for good? Yes. 
and you're ready to quiet yourself down and submit yourself to his will, come here. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, be merciful to this woman. And may thy spirit come upon her. And may she be made whole, Lord. Give to her the desire of her heart. Grant these kind blessings, our Heavenly Father, in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I go believing, go rejoicing, being happy. Now look, lady. If God Almighty can reveal your life here before this audience, He certainly, if He knows what was, He will know what will be. Is that right? I don't worry. Weary hasn't got one bit of value to it at all. No. See? What would worry do any good? But faith does do good. Yeah. So have faith. God bless you. Praise Lord. All right, come, lady. You believe? Amen. Amen. You want to get over the asthma? Amen. Just accept Jesus Christ now as your healer? Amen. With all your heart? Amen. Now, what you got on your mind is you go lay hands on me. Yes, come here. All right, Lord Jesus, you said according to your faith, I pray that you'll heal her now in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I go out thanking God and get over it and don't bother it anymore. All right. Have faith in God now. Believe with all your heart and you shall receive all your blessings. Amen. Now, I'm not reading the people's mind as some of you thinking out there now. That's wrong. Here, I, I, this is a man standing here. I've never looked at him. Put your hand on my shoulder, sir. Could God reveal to me here what's wrong with you? Yes. You want to get over the asthmatic condition too? If you, you do? All right. I've never looked you in the face, so it couldn't be reading your mind. You got asthma? Yes. You're nervous. Going off the platform, be well in Jesus Christ's name. Oh, See? It's vision, friend, not reading mine. It's vision. Have faith in God. Believe with all your heart. All right, come. So nervous, eye condition, bothering you, stigmatism. You want God to make you well? He has done it. You believe it? All right, that settles it. Father, thank you for our faith, and may she go from here and not be troubled anymore. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. amen. I go rejoicing, Mother, thanking God, and you shall receive just exactly what you've asked for. Wonderful, wonderful Jesus is to me, the Counselor, Prince of Peace, mighty God is He, saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer. Praise His name. You believe? You believe that arthritis is going to leave you now and you're going off the platform? Well, just hobble right on off the platform, stomping your feet up and down. Don't, don't give in to it. Oh, that's right. Amen. You believing now with all your heart? All right. Come. How do you do? You believe? I believe that, Mother. The trouble's in your eyes, isn't it? Cataracts over your eyes. There's something strange about you. Do you believe me as God's servant? I do. I believe that. You're, you're been a traveler, haven't you? You're a missionary, that's what you are. You've been over many waters. Is that true? Yes, around the world three times. Yeah, around the world three times. They've been all the mission fields. All the mission fields. God be with you. My sympathy goes for you. And my admiration goes for you. You've got some... You're connected with somebody that's a, an official in a, a school or, or son-in-law or something. A, that's a, a, It's Asbury College. That's where it's at. You're in Methodist, aren't you? From Wilmore, Kentucky. Is that right? God bless you. Oh, God, give this woman her sight. I pray that the cataract will die and this woman will be well. God bless this old handsmaid of yours who's traveled the seas. And may she be healed in Jesus Christ's name. I ask the demon of darkness to never blind these eyes over that she'll see yet to glorify Jesus Christ. In his name we ask it. Amen. God bless you, Mother. Go on your road rejoicing now and be well. Let's say praise be to God. All right. Come later. Hallelujah! Yeah. What was first? What was first? 
What, what, what happened to something down there? It was the, the cataract, something else. The oh. sister, she, her, 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 her son-in-law was an aspirin heart motorist. Oh. oh. How do you do? You want to get over that old nervous condition and go home and get well? Be made whole? You believe God will make you that way? Yes, Lord Jesus, may thy hands of grace and power be laid upon her. May she go from here tonight and be healed, sound, and well. I pray that her faith will not fail. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. I go rejoicing now and say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. That's the time. Amen. amen. All right, come, lady. Are you believing with all your heart? Yes. Believe it, God will make you well. Yeah. That's the way to believe it. Blessed be the Lord Jesus Christ. A vision appeared right here. It's somebody that's sitting right in here somewhere. I couldn't see the face. Well, it's got something wrong with her hands, kind of a, a, a breaking on their hands. Right, right in here somewhere. I see somebody had a, was it something on their hands. It's a blood eruption. That's what it is, blood disease or something. It's making it, sitting right in there. Oh, yes. No wonder. That's, God bless you. All right. Now, do you want to get over the heart trouble? Yes. Go true. rejoicing, saying, thank you, Lord, and get well. Amen. Let's say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now. How do you do, sir? You believe that God will make you well? Yes. You know the heart trouble? And you also are anemia? Is that right? Do you believe that God will make you well? I heard you, doctor, what he said to you. Go accept Jesus Christ as your healer, and you shall have it. God bless you, my brother, in Jesus' name. Let's say praise be to God. Hallelujah. Have faith now. Be reverent. Believe with all your heart. Bring the man. That's kind of a bad place there, isn't it? It's a rug down there. Yes, sir. All right. We are strangers, sir. We are. I don't believe we ever met in life. But God knows us both, doesn't he? Yes, sir, he does. Now, as far as your healing, Jesus Christ has purchased that when he died at Calvary. I'm just his servant to try to help you to have faith. You understand that, don't you? Yes, sir. You're seriously ill, sir. You have been operated on. You was operated on for a gallbladder condition. Yes, sir. Now, that's... Look at there at the shots. Just hold right here to the side of this guy. Yes, sir. In the operation, they found something else, didn't they? Yes, sir, and it's in the, in the intestinal tract. That's right. Mm-hmm. You believe God will heal you of that? Yes, sir. You do. If I'll ask him and you'll believe him, then he, it'll have to happen more. Now, look, sir. You realize that you just got, the doctor told you six months. Is that right? Six months to you. Tell him. You know that within a few moons, you're going to pass to the other side. You only have one hope, my brother. I don't care if I can get well in tomorrow. I wish you in the morning. Certainly. get well. I'm ready to do it. But what would you do if he let you live? Testify of him and glorify him with you? Pray, I'll go anywhere he said. God bless you. That's the way to feel. That's the way. I'll do it. Sir? Yeah, I'll do it. All right. Now, let us pray and ask him. Lord Jesus, the Son of God, as this dying man stands here before me, confessing that that he has accepted you as his Savior. He believes in you. I pray, Father, that you will bless the man and will heal him. And may the doctors be surprised when they look back at him again saying, What's happened to you, man? Then he'll give praise and glory to thee. For we ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Say, I want to talk to you just a moment. Wait That's right. See? You just stop that. Give it up to God. God bless you. See? God had to reveal that. God bless you. Just go read your Let's say praise be to God. Amen.
Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. You believe with all your heart? Hallelujah. The Lord bless you, my sister. Only believe. Have faith in God. Got a back trouble that's hurting you there. You just kept holding on to God. You were crying out to Him and praying, believing that God would make you well. Having faith. Isn't that right? All right, sir. He, he's heard you, so don't worry no more now. God's peace be upon you. Setting over the stomach trouble, second one in back there. If you want to be healed too, just believe God. God will make you well. Standing right over you now. And a table sitting there where it's, I know you're refusing your food. Yes, but you believe that he makes you well? All right, sir. The lady sitting next to you there too? Yes, sir. You believe that God will make you well? All right, God will be with you. That's right. Sir, you're for a very just cause. You want to quit smoking and go and be made well and healed of God? And you're fixing to leave town tonight, aren't you? You're fixing to go away. And God's here to make you well and sends you away from here rejoicing and happy if you'll just believe him with all your heart. If you accept him now as your deliverer, Almighty God, may your spirit come up on the man. May he go away from here tonight and praise you the rest of his days, God. Grant it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Now go rejoice and say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Every person sitting in here tonight should be well right now. Amen. Do you believe that young man sitting there in the wheelchair? You do believe that? Do you believe that, sir, sitting over there in the wheelchair? Anybody can see that you are what's wrong with you. You're crippled. It's these people that look well is the things where the mystery comes. Little lady, what do you think about it? You believe that Christ will make you well? How many sick people's in here raise your hand and say, I believe that Christ will make me well right now? I want to quote something to you. I want to do it. The morning's not striking me so hard at this time because I skipped a few of them through there without saying nothing to them or watching for vision so I could do this at the end of the line. There was in the Bible three lepers set at the gate one time of the city of Samaria. It was besieged by the Syrians. And they were lepers. In the city, they were killing one another's children and eating the children. They'd eat all the bark off the tree and the grass off the ground. And these lepers says, well, the Syrians had them besieged and to starve them to death. Now they said, why set we here until we die? Right. Now we got to do something. Now let's see. There's only two roads. One of them led in the city. They had three things they could do. They could go into the city when the gates opened again. Or they could sit where they were. Or they could go down to the camp of the Syrians. Well, they said, if we go into the city, there's no food there because the people are eating one another's children. So there's no food there. And if we sit here... We're sure to die. So we only got one hope. That is, we'll go down to the Syrians. If they kill us, we'll go die anyhow. We're we're going to die. So if we go down to the host of the Syrians, if they kill us, we die anyhow. But if they save us, then we live. Now, they only had one, one chance, and that was going down to the host of the Syrians. Now, what a chance that was to an enemy and them lepers. So you're not in that position tonight. But perhaps you're sitting in these chairs, you've got cancer, you, you're eat up with cancer, TB and so forth. There's not a thing on earth that you can do about it. Your doctor has done all he can do. Medical science, everything has done all they can do. And if you're sitting there, you're bound to die in that condition. So let's do something about it. We got a chance tonight. And that's not go down to the enemy's camp, but come to your lovely heavenly father who's promised to heal you. You're going to die anyhow. So let's come and believe his word. He may save you. Not he may, he will, he has. He's just only wanting you to believe it and exercise a little faith. Can you do that? Can you believe tonight for anything? Oh, my brother, sister, if you could only take a hold yonder and say, yes, Lord Jesus, I believe it. 
If you believe it deep enough in your heart, there's not enough devils in this country to keep you from being healed tonight. All heavens and earth will pass away, but God's word shall never pass away. Is that right? Now, he said, whatsoever things you desire, I have to watch over the audience. People are being healed sitting right along here now. After I'm gone from here weeks, you'll still be hearing of people being healed. Saying, well, that just left me. That just left me. It's happening all over the building right now. It does each night. I see it like that. If I go to look close to it, then it's just one vision from another. And then I get so weak, I can hardly go through the meeting. But let's you and I tonight rise and say, Lord Jesus, I've, I've sat here long enough. I'm coming to you tonight believing with all my heart that you're going to do it right now for me. Will you believe it? Now, I'll tell you what I want you to do. I want you to bow your head everywhere. Now, I'm going to pray for you. And now, if you believe the commission of the angel, he said, if you'll be sincere, get the people to believe, nothing shall stand before the prayer. Now, look, friends. Think of King George of England when he was healed with multiple cirrhosis. And we had prayer for him. Think of Florence Nightingale, her grandmother, the founder of the Red Cross, with about 60 pounds of weight, lay dying out her with a cancer on the duodenal of the stomach, laying there dying. The little dove flew into the bush there, and the Spirit of God come and said, Thus saith the Lord, she shall live, and she weighs 155 pounds in perfect health. Think of Congressman Upshaw sitting bound in chairs in bed for year after year, for 66 years, and right in a moment's time, raised to his feet, run through the building, touched his toes, was perfectly made normal and well. Just think of the thousands and thousands of people that's been healed. Why sit we here until we die? Let's do something about it. Now, if God would respect the prayer, I'm asking each one, don't pray for yourself, pray for somebody else. Don't pray for yourself, I'm going to pray for you, you pray for somebody else. And then I'm going to ask the devil with one rebuke to leave every person here, and I believe anybody that will believe Jesus Christ and accept him and his resurrected power will be healed tonight. Right here. You can accept it and go home and be well. I want you to bow your heads. Lord Jesus, I have tried with all my heart, Lord, in these past nights to explain, to bring to the people the love of God that he had for them when he shed abroad the Holy Spirit in their hearts. They're lovely. They sit in this hot building listening every night. But Lord, I realize that there's one thing wrong. That Satan keeps making them wonder, well, am I sure he could be? I pray thee, Lord, that you will bless them and will heal them. And may your spirit be upon everyone just now. And may the enemy lose his grip. And may women and men and boys and girls, those who are sitting in the building now, with one accord, Lord, look to you as we're praying one for the other. And I pray that you'll break the host of Satan, yes. that great spirit of unbelief. Yes. Oh, God, knowing that he's the one that causes the enemy. Yes. He's the one that causes the, the defects. For all things are possible to them that believe. Yes. And when unbelief is existence, then God can't have the right of way. Yes. The Father made the devil flee tonight. Amen. Grant it, Lord. Amen. And now he's your servant. Yes. As I stand here in a representative way. Of your vicarious suffering and bleeding and dying under a Calvary. When he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes we were healed. Lord God, I believe that. And stand before your people as your representative. Hallelujah. Amen. As your ambassador. Yes. And I say to Satan tonight, you have no right to hold these people Amen. any longer. Amen. They are believing. Their hearts are meeting him with God. Wielding him with his spirit. And now I rebuke thee, Satan, you devil that's making these people suffer. Yes. Come out of them in the name yes. of Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you believe that you're healed? Amen. If you do, rise up and give God praise and glory. Amen. Stand to your feet if you believe Amen. you're healed. Clap your hands. Say, thank you, Lord Amen. Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, Brother Jose.